Hi coaches, today we're going to talk about developing your power play uh, in practice uh, by using small area games. And uh, there's a lot of different ways to work on your power play. I'm going to show you how I've been working on my power play last few years. So first of all, let's talk in general uh, terms about the power play. So what can the power play do for your team? Well, special teams decide a lot of games. If you watch the Stanley Cup playoffs this year, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Tampa Bay's power play was just incredible. And that really carried them all the way to the Cup. Uh, another thing about power play is that it really gets big momentum swings for you in a game. Your team's down a little bit, you're down a goal or two, but you get on a power play, or if you really have a really great power play and you get some power plays, you know that that can bring back the confidence to your team and get you back into games. And it gives your team confidence, or it can take it away. If your power play is really cooking, you can't wait to get on the power play. But if you're struggling on the power play, it kind of gets to a time where all, it's almost like football. They want to refuse the penalty. But uh, one thing I will tell you about, about, uh, about confidence and that the most consistent source of confidence is preparation. And this is what we're talking about. And I think any coach uh, at any, any level will tell you that, and especially any successful coach, that they feel that the, the, most, the biggest effect that they have on their team is in practice. And when teams practice well, they tend to play well. Because if they practice well, it builds up their confidence, and that generally carries through to the game. And you can intimidate other teams uh, with your power play, or you make them bolder. If a team is, is terrified of your power play, if you know, if they know that uh, if they take some stupid penalties that they're going to have to pay a price, you can really change the way they play. And you can close out games, or you can get back into games in a hurry. It really is a momentum shifter. And it's uh, one of the reasons that we spend so much time on. So things to consider. First of all is the age group and the level that you're coaching. Now, the small area games we're going to be uh, looking at are, are, are pretty useful for, I would say, from at least Pee Wee Double, even Pee Wee Triple A, up until the professional ranks. So you have to know what level that you're coaching at and choose games and drills that are appropriate for the, your players. The skill level of your players. Are your players skilled enough to do these games or these drills? If not, well, then we have to focus more on the individual skills to get to the point where we can do a more complicated drill or game. Now, the biggest challenge we have as coaches sometimes is the amount of practice time that we have. And then when are you going to practice it? Do you practice it every day, once a week, maybe only on game day skates? One thing is for sure, with as important as power play is, I think that every day, every practice, you should be working on some portion of your power play anyways, even if it's just the power play skills. So, and again, your personal philosophy, does everybody play the PP? Two units, three units, you reward or punish players with power play time. This is important to know because when you set up your practice, you're going to, if you're only going with uh, maybe 10 players on your power play, you have to be concerned about the, what the other players are doing at the same time. So this also influences how you're going to practice and develop your power play. And then do you mix up your lines or you, you create special units. Are you going to mix and match and try to put the best units together? And this also affects your practice, you know, how you're going to practice it. And then... Do you use your power play to develop your players, or do you go with your top players all the time? So in, uh, in youth hockey, for sure. At youth hockey, we're more concerned about, about developing players, but as we know, coaches, uh, everybody wants to win. So you're always looking to find that find, uh, find balance between development and also keeping everybody involved in winning games. So when we're looking about developing a power play and practicing a power play, we have to consider the four key components of an effective power play. Okay, number one is the offensive zone face-off options, winning it and not winning it. So you have to be prepared underway. So, and the second part of it is that breakouts. Okay, how many breakouts you know, are, are you going to use? If you watch the NHL right now, the NHL has gotten to the point where, you know, every breakout they make is a different variation of some other, and uh, this trickles down to other leagues. Uh, junior A, uh, Midget, Bantam, I think we're getting more. So those also have to be practiced. Offensive zone entries, this is one of the key components of a power play, is being able to gain that blue line with possession and get set up. And this is something that the top power plays have the ability to do. And the last one, of course, is your offensive zone options. And it's almost limitless. I mean, the big ones, overload, the umbrella, 1-3-1, one, one, box in one, spread 1-3-1. One, one. So you have all these different options that you can go through. So uh, my point is this, if these are the four key elements of the power play, you should be working on every part of these elements during practice and when you have a chance, especially in small area games. So now, 
when we're developing your power call, again, it goes back to knowing your team. Pick face-off strategies, breakouts, offensive zone entries that best suit your team. Are your players able to execute your vision? Are your players able to uh, execute the type of plays that you want them to put in place? And then when you're teaching your players, a, a, a visual explanation really helps. We're all visual learners. So telling them is not enough. You just can't tell them, go down to the blue line, cut inside, and this player comes down, etc. It's really helpful to be able to use them, uh, really to, to uh, show them uh, the uh, video clips or in animated clips. We're going to show you uh, the games uh, using uh, Hockey Coach Vision and the animations that it creates. And uh, it's really important because we're all such visual learners. And then to practice the power play, especially the skills part of it, you break it down into small elements. So we're talking, and we're going to go over the skills, but you, the little parts of the power play, you break them down, you, you practice those, and then you put it back together again to create your full power play. And then we start to build with no resistance. So when we start working on power play, you might work on a 5-on-0 setup, and then maybe a 3-on-1, a 4-on-2, et cetera, till the point where you get into a full ice uh, game-like situation where we're, we're playing uh, PK against power play. And then make it a competition. So this is one thing that I've, I've, I've done over the years is that if you really want to have great practice, especially in a five-on-three situation, because we know when a five-on-three situation comes up, uh, players just can't wait to get onto the ice. But what I'll do is if I have two units, I'll have them practice against each other. And each unit will get three times 30 seconds, and the team that scores the most goals starts the next power play in the next game. Well, then you get some really serious uh, practice uh, because you have you know players diving in front of shots and get really ticked off if somebody's not executing. Now, at the NHL level, I'm not quite so sure they want to have Sidney Crosby out there playing three against five blocking shots. But at a minor league level, it certainly is a great way to practice your power play. So let's take a look at the special skills for the jobs that we're looking at. So these are some of the skills that we're using in our power play. One touch passing, one time shooting, quick release shooting, shot pass, pulling the puck off the wall. Very, a very, very important skill on power play to be able to take that puck when we have to rim and put on the wall to take it off and make a quick play. Uh, puck protection along the wall, screening, deflections, deceptive passing, loose puck battle skills, lateral slide by the defenseman. There's a number of skills. And what I'd like you to do, coaches, and we're looking at these small area games, is I want you to think about each skill that we're working on. Like what are these games actually focus on and what skills are we developing by using these small area games? And then how do we practice this? Well, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to focus on small area games. I think it's a great way to practice in general five on five and it's a great way to practice and build up your power play skills on uh, five against four. So for small area games, what small area games are really good for? It really it, it reduces the play down in small areas and really increases the intensity of the game. And it really improves the decision making. Everybody has to do things quickly. And at the end of the day, it's fun. Everybody likes playing small area games. So when they're having fun, they're working hard without even knowing that they're working hard. And then we have to put up games and we have to have drills that actually have a purpose. And this is where we go back to my original questions. When we're looking at these small area games, think about what skills we're working on in these particular games. And then choose games that develop the parts of the game and skills that you want to work on. So again, take a look and let's we'll break it down for them. So let's roll the video and let's switch over to Hockey Coach Vision. Okay, in the Hockey Coach Vision app, let's open up the, the practice part and let's open up our power play drills in small area games. So let's just go through a progression of how we go about teaching this. So this first game is called Cross the Box Defender, and we're working on PP skills for these red players in the middle, and then we have power play passing skills for the blue players on the outside. And the way the game works is coach is going to throw in a puck, and now the blue players on the side are trying to make a pass through the box to the players on the other side. And for that, they get one point. If the defenders intercept the puck or pick one off, they get a point. So that would be one point for the blues. And this time, they're going to pressure, and they get it back on the outside. So let's flip into 3D. And we'll take a look at that from the end zone here. Now, the rules of this game are simple. For the PK players, one player can force. The other players are just moving along, taking passing lanes and trying to cut things off. So we have one player forcing. When that red player comes out, another player can move in and start forcing. So again, it's about quick puck movement, take-to-take -take passes, and everybody getting open when they can. 
Okay, so cross the box defending. And coaches, you're all going to be made available uh, these uh, these games one way or the other, so you don't have to be madly scrambling to, to write these down. We'll get them to you one way or the other. Now, this next one, we start off with three on one. And we set up three white uh, power play players on this side with one defender and a goaltender, and then mirror that on the other side with three red attackers, one, one defender. Now, the rules of this game are pretty simple. Is the coach is going to throw a puck into the attackers, they're going to try to score a goal. If the goalie gets it or the defender gets it, they can fire it into the empty net and they get a point. So you get a point for scoring, and the defenders can score as well on the empty net. So again, this is about setting up in a bit of an umbrella. So you've got one touch passing, one time shooting, quick through the box passing. So the team on the left uh, would get uh, would get a point, and the team on the right, the defenders, get a point on the other side. So we just focus in here on the, on these players down here. So if you focus in on the right this time, the defender they're going to be a, a shot block and he's going to get a rebound back and put one in the empty net. And I always love it when the defenders uh, get points in these games. So that's, uh, that's the demanding three-on-one. And again, the idea is we're going to kind of start to keep build up resistance. So here's a similar game, but now we're going cross ice and what's the one puck game. So now coach fires in a puck to the attackers and the defender and the goaltender can take that puck and move it whenever they get it. So this way they throw it up to the attackers and they make a few quick passes and then a one-time shot and they score the goal on the other side. So we'll just run that one time back again. We'll just leave that in 2D for this one. Again, one puck goes in, the attackers move it around. If there's a loose puck, defender can fire it back up to the attackers on the other side, and they take that puck to the net as quickly as possible, get the shot, jam for rebounds. So we're working a lot of good things. In. Quick puck movement, one touch shooting, one touch passing, and uh, quick upping. So the next one, Panther power play. So now we're getting a little bit more resistance. So now we're, we're taking this into a three-on-one. So we have shooters set up at the top with flankers on the outside, and we're going to start with a race for the puck. So we have red number one against white number 11. So the coach is going to pop one off the end boards and check, sorry, chip one to the middle, and there's a race, and then whoever wins that gets the puck. So that red player is now a defender against a three-on-one. When he gets it back, now he can take it the other side. And the puck has to go up to the shooter at the top before they can attack the net. That's pretty much the only really uh, rule that you have to be concerned about in that one there. So we'll watch that again. We'll watch that again in 3D. We'll just flip that. We'll take a side view of this this time. We'll just zoom in a little bit. So again, chip, race for the puck. And then it's, then it's just a straight three on one. So as you notice, these are all like half zone drills or just in the one end zone. So you have to be concerned about and think about what your players are doing in the other zone. They could be doing the exact same game in the other zone, but uh, we have to keep everybody involved and uh, be part of the what's going on out there. Now, so that was a three on one. So now the next step is we're going to add a little bit more resistance. It's going to start in a similar fashion. We have the point shooters up top. And this is called Renwick's power play three against two. So we start with a chip off the end wall this time. And then we have four players racing for the puck. And of course, whoever gets the puck, they're on offense and the two blue players must defend. So they have a quick spread. They must get the puck back up to the point shooter as quickly as possible and then attack the net. So this time now when the blues get it, they throw it up to their point shooter really quickly. They, he kind of improvises and now you can shift around. So now we're going to go to a play where we have a shot screen. So now we work on the one-time shooting from the, the shooter up top of the, of the umbrella, and we're working on screen and rebound techniques, deflections down in front on this game. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll give that another shot here in, uh, in 3D, and we'll watch this one from the end zone. So what are we working? We're working on puck protection skills here. We're working on loose puck battles. We're working on quick passing through the, through the box. We're working on screens, tips, uh, puck recovery. Puck recovery is huge on your power play coaches. Is that any good power play is really good. Anytime that you get a shot, you recover the puck, you're saving yourself 20 or 25 seconds going back, breaking out, and setting up again. So all these, these little drills are great for working on puck recovery as well. And next one. So now we went for a three on two. 
So now let's go to a four on two. Now this game, I'm just going to show you this one in 2D. It's a very simple game. You have two defenders in the middle. This time we have a, a defenseman and a forward against a, a box set up right here where they're going to move that puck around through the box and get as many scoring chances as possible. And we would like the defenders to force the puck. If we always have one player forcing the puck. So three forces, the defender forces are always forcing until they open up a seam pass for a one-time shot and get the goal. I'll run that one more time. Okay. So again, the defenders, you want one defender always forcing the puck to open up those passing lanes and shooting lanes for the attacking players. Okay. A very nice little game. You only need six players to do that, so you can do that with a reduced number of players to work on those passing and shooting skills. Now, a very similar game, except this one, we're going to allow the players to switch around and either stay in a box, uh, in a box formation, or slide into their 1-3-1 uh, formation. So we're going to start out with the coach, okay, fires the puck deep, and now we've got a four on two. So the blue player is going to slide it to a 1-2-1. One, one. They've got a screen tip guy in front. And then they recover at the Reds. Now they're going to move it over to the other side, and now they're going to go and get a chance to play. So this time they're going to move up. They've got a backdoor uh, play going on there with the defenseman, and they score a goal. And then for the change on this one, that's done on every goal, or when the coach blows the whistle, you let them play for maybe 30 seconds back and forth, and then you move in and you switch sides. Okay, so that's a two-corner, four against two. And the idea of coaches, again, is that we're just building up the resistance. So this is a real nice a real nice game, this Royal Road game. And the setup goes like this. So we have two white players and two red players in front of the net. You have a dot shooter, a white dot shooter here, with the, the point shooter cross box up here. And then the reds are set up the same way. So you have the red shooter set up on the dot with a red uh, D shooter or a point player up top. Now, the point players can slide anywhere along the blue line here in between the coach and the wall. The point players have to stay pretty close to that dot. And the other players, these other players, they're just playing two on two, but they have to be able to use their players. So when they gain possession, it's a four on two game. So coach fires one off the goalie to start. White gets possession. It has to go to one of the, 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 the shooter or the, uh, the dot shooter. He slides it, throws it across for a one-timer. They get a rebound. So now He's going to uh, pass that one off to the dot shooter, and now they're going to move it back up to the top and continue the attack. This time, the white two, he takes away the cross box, but the defender up top sees it, shoots it for a tip, and they score a goal. So let's watch that one. Let's watch that one in 3D. So this is getting into your 1-3 setup where we're getting, this is more of a tactical small area game where you're really working on the skills for that point shooter passer up top and you've got the OB Steve Stamkos shooter, you know, on that base off dot. So this is where we're moving into more tactical, tactical types of small area games where we're taking parts of our power play and we move them into a small area game to practice specific parts of the game that we want to work on. Now this one, this devil's five on two. The setup goes like this. We have one net on the side and one net over here on the, on the goal line. You've got five white players against two defenders, and then you've got uh, five reds on the other side with two defenders. And this is a one-puck game. So defenders, when they get it, they want to move it to the other side as quickly as possible. And these players in the middle, if the red team is attacking on offense, this white player should back out to the circle just to open up, give them a little bit more space. And the same thing, when the whites get the puck, then this red flanker on the side should slide a little bit just inside the circle to give them space. So let's take a look at this game. So the reds are going to start with it. They're playing five on two. They're going to move it around. And then there's going to be an attack here. And then the whites get it right away and move it quickly over the other side. Now they're playing five on two. So again, this is a one puck game with quick movement and quick uh, side, -to -side, uh, side to side movement here. We'll just watch this one from the side. Again, pick out the skills that we're looking at. So this is more of a tactical one where we actually have five players. That low attack, you can do wheel plays. You can start to work on the tactical parts for power play, and that we work it to the TJ Oshie slot shot in the middle is what they did there. Now, we've been dealing mostly with half zone games or just in the end zone games. So now we're going to spread out, and this is where you get most of your team practicing. So again, one puck drill. We've got 
five on four, five reds, five, four whites on this side, and then we have the five on three unit down here. So we only have thread, three red players, but you can, you can make it whatever you want. You can make it a five on four, five on two. It's up to you. Okay, so we start off by firing a puck into uh, the reds. They're going to go right into their power play. So they're going to use a low umbrella, this one, for this first attack, and they end up with a slot shot. Whites get it, throw it down to the other end, and now the whites are playing their five on three on the other end. Now, I'm just going to pause it right here. So what happens at this point is when that puck's down on the other end, this is a time where a coach can move in. He can give a few coaching tips to the other players on the five on four while the other team is playing five on three down on the other side. So they'll continue playing five on three until the whistle or a goal scored or the goalie smothers the puck. Okay? So that is one puck uh, full ice uh, power play. So this is just working on, on half zone. So now we are just strictly working on, on half zone stuff. So let's get more into working breakouts and entries off it as well. So this is, this is a Roger Nielsen power play drill. And um, we're going to start by firing a puck in. And they, they're, uh, every, every player is going to touch the puck before they slide into one of their options, okay? So coach fires in a puck. There's a bunch of quick one-touch one passes when everybody touches the puck. And then from this point, they're going to slide into their, their group. So they're going to slide into their 1-3-1. One, one. They come back out on this side. They get up for a one-timer with a screen. And now the coach chips one down to the other side of the, of the, uh, the rink. And this is where now we're going to add PK pressure. So now the penalty killers come off the bench, and this is where the power play can now work on their breakouts and on their entries. So this time they're doing a, uh, a two-man middle delay, and where we have options on both sides, they're going to get it in and they're going to set it up. And then the coach, you can dictate as much as you want here. So you can see the other team's moving down the other side, ready to set up, and they're ready to go back and forth. So this is more of a scrimmage situation where you have PK and power play alternating off both sides. All right? Now, this next one, again, this was a Detroit three puck, and we're going to work on this one. Well, let's just take a look. You think about coaches, the skills that we're working on this particular drill. I'll give you the play-by-play, -play, but think about the skills that we're using. Okay, coach is going to chip one to start, and that's a live battle. So that's going to be a live battle right there, PK against the power play. So that's the first puck. Then we'll let that first puck run until there's a goal, a whistle, or a frozen puck. Now the coach is going to fire one off the goalie to create another low battle, and they go right into the power play again. And then on the third puck, now we're going to put it down to the other end of the rink, and now the Reds are going to break out against the, uh, the penalty killer uh, unit on the other side. So we're working power play, and we're working our PK at the same time. So again, this is full ice. This is more of a scrimmage situation. We have power play possibly on one side and PK players on the other. But it's a very, it's a great way to practice and you get maximum zone time starting with those two pucks in the zone. And as an option for that, you can start from a face-off. So you start from a face-off play and it's live. So if the PK clears it, they got to break it out. Or you have the option of blowing a whistle and throwing a, throwing a puck to the, the power play right away if you want to start and really focus on your on your uh, offensive zone uh, uh, plays. Okay? And then the last one we're going to take a look at is this one you can run in practice with everybody. If you have four uh, five-player units, you can practice this, and everybody gets a chance to play power play. Everybody gets a chance to play PK. So we start out this drill with a five-on-three. There's a five-on-three entry, and then the coach is going to move to the middle of the ice for the puck. So he's going to let that run out until a whistle, and then on the whistle, he's going to chip a puck to the wall. The red defenseman is going to put it high hard on the plexiglass. The attackers have to move out, and then an extra defender comes in, and now they're playing five-on-four, and coach gets a new puck. Same thing. Chip it to the wall, hard rim, okay? And now, with an extra blue going in, now they're playing five-on-five, five, and three red players move into the middle. And when those five blue players recover the puck, they break out, and now they're playing five on three down the other end. Okay? So nice little game. Let's just watch that from the side one more time in 3D. Okay? And uh, we, start with the, uh, we start with the entry. And again, the coach is in the middle of the ice. On the whistle, blows it. That, that defenseman has to clear. He has to put it high and hard on the plexiglass. Everybody has to touch up. Everybody has to be on side. And then you can have the goalie try to cut the rims or not cut the rims. That's your decision. If you want to work on goalies cutting rims, challenge it.
put it high on that plexiglass, make him work. And then finally, when we get to that final five on three uh, situation, or sorry, five on five situation, you can see that we have the three new red players up in the middle are ready to uh, defend. So that's the, the that end of, of that part as far as those small area games. Let's go back into the, the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, coaches, let's talk about the things that we've learned, like uh, hopefully learned uh, during this, this presentation, okay? Power play is a game change. We know that. It gives you momentum or kills it. We've got to focus on the basics. And this is what we're talking about, developing your power play in practice. Work on, on face-off plans, winning it or not winning it. Work on clean breakouts and entries. If you have to shoot the puck in, okay, then we have to work those wall skills and those battle skills down low. We'd rather walk it in and get set up, but those are things we have to practice. Work on pounding the puck to the net. Work on those net front screening deflecting skills. Those are really unappreciated skills. And again, taking the puck off the wall under pressure and making a play. But really work on recovering loose pucks. Loose puck recovery is a huge part of your power play, and the best teams are really good at it. Have a plan. What's your A plan, B plan, C plan? And whatever you do, compete hard all the time. Your power play guys have to outwork your penalty killing guys. And know your competition. Knowledge is power. Know where they're going to force you. Know who, where the weak points are. What are their tendencies on the, on the PK? What are their tendencies on their forecheck? That's really going to help your power play. And then adjust your power play in game and in the practice. So it's a process. It never ends. I mean, as we change one thing now that there's no secrets that you're in a league where they have video and people exchange video, you always have to be prepared to adjust. And then that's pretty much it, coaches. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, if you'd like uh, some more information on uh, Hockey Coach Vision, there's my email address. And there's our, if you'd like to check out our website. Uh, for the coaches that are on Hockey Coach Vision, would like to have those package of drills, just write to me and I'll send them to you. And if coaches, if you'd like to uh, give Hockey Coach Vision a shot, uh, you just go to our website, uh, you click uh, get the app and you put in this discount code, coaches site. And that will give you uh, that will give you a, a discount off your first year subscription. And I'll also uh, throw in my uh, small area games package, which has about 55 small area games in it, uh, of which you have a lot of the ones that we saw in the power play right now. So thanks for your time, coaches. Good luck this season. Stay safe, but find a way to have fun. Thanks.